Evening. Uh, I don't want to be pedantic, I've got to say it's Matthew Nicholson. The reason I say that, no, it's all right. There's a guy uh, who's another poet um, called Matt Nicholson in Hull, and we've actually had this chat about who uses Matt and who uses Matthew. He's got a book out before me, so he's, he's Matt. Is everyone uh, enjoying the night so far? Good, I'll try not to fuck it up too much for you. Uh, right, the first, um, first poem I'm going to do is uh, a tribute to all single mums. Uh, it's a poem called um, Another Working Class Hero. She's got two part-time jobs, works her fingers to the bone. A single mum with no support from him, but she made that house a home. Empty promises of child support to help to feed her pack. Every bloke she's ever known's always fucked off and turned the back. She doesn't feel resentment. She never has the time. If she gets an hour to herself each day, she swears that she'll be fine. Her life's always a struggle, and money's always tight. She often uses doorstep lenders for a loan to see her right. Exploiters of the working class, corruptors of the poor. However ruined she may be, they'll keep on offering more. She's a regular at the cash converter where she pawns the kids' PlayStation. A monthly embarrassment faced inside this fucked up situation. A gas and electric run on meters, and both have larger rears. She'll have it all paid back, eventually, but it's gonna take her years. Now she's back in the emergency, and there's nothing in the tank. There's no money left for shopping, so she's forced to use the food bank. Life shouldn't be this way, if only the class divide was thinner. She's struggling to be both parents and the sole breadwinner. She's living hand to mouth, firmly fixed in poverty. Modern day Britain imitating a Dickensian tragedy. This ain't a tale of two cities, but a story told in every town. Though it broke her heart, she felt relief when her eldest got sent down. It's not because she's heartless or because she doesn't care, but now there's one less hungry mouth to feed for the time he spends in there. I thought I'd start with something light. <laughs> um, right, this next one hasn't really got a title, but the title's the last line of the poem. Again, it's another happy one. Because that's what I do. <laughs> you try and write happy, but sometimes you just ain't fucking got it in you. <laughs> it's just another typical night out with the lads. The beers are flowing and shots are being downed while shamelessly flirting with a hen party. Enjoying a night on the town. See that fella over there? Hi, that's the one. Life and soul of the party. Filling the air with banter and bravado. A proper man's man. Tough as old boots he is. Captain of his local rugby team. He's got hands like shovels. All the lads respect him. And the ladies, they fucking love him. I bet he could landscape a garden in a day. Ripping up trees with his bare hands if they dared to stand in his way. Look at him. Showing off his prowess on the pool table. His smile lights up the place. A face that stands out from the crowd. Self-confident. He's a legend of the bears. Everything is good in the world. A picture postcard of a pissed up party. Later that night, in the taxi ride home, he sits in silence. He'd played a blinder, avoiding rearview when glances from the driver. He sighs loudly, unprovoked, staring blankly into the distance as he curses to himself through gritted teeth. Back home, and he's standing in the kitchen, negative thinking, in a voice unflinching. He can feel himself sinking. He wishes there was someone he could talk to, but instinct kicks in. And he carries on drinking. At 10 a.m., two pals arrive to pick him up, like every Sunday morning, ready to head to the match. The challenge of playing with a hangover got tougher as they aged, but they always battled through. The way real men are born and raised and always told they have to do. His coat was on the front lawn, the door slightly ajar, keys still in the lock from the night before. His pals laughed and agreed. Last night's session was one of the best they'd had in years. They walked in to greet him. 
and found him sitting on the sofa with his head back. An empty bottle of whiskey in his hand. Tablets scattered by his feet. No pulse. No note. No explanation. A million questions unanswered. Uh, right, I've got time for one more, so I'll, um, I'll, try, and, I'll try and lighten it, but... Um, oh, you, you want to take away one? You want to take away? I'm going to do my Yorkshire like poem. Do I want... I'll do the takeaway one, right? This, this, is, this is for Gemma, and uh, for anyone who's ever tried to order a takeaway when there's more than two people in the household at the time. <laughs> it's not really got a title, but it could be any number of expletives, so pick your own. Like a Mexican standoff, but eyes won't dare to look, as each housemate has forgotten whose turn it is to cook. Nobody can be arsed in truth with the beers already flowing. It's like a game of poker, and nobody's hands are showing. Another hour passes, and faces start to frown, the suggestion of a takeaway no housemate dare turn down. Decisive action needed, so which one we're going to use, producing 16 different menus. Christ, will someone fucking choose? <laughs> French, Japanese, Italian, Turkish, tapas or Thai. One pretentious twat wants Lebanese. <laughs> All housemates wish he'd die. He says he'd have a Chinese, but they never really fill him. If he doesn't pick a curry soon, somebody's going to kill him. Why don't we order Nepalese or maybe Madagascan? Which curry do you want? Because I'm getting tired of asking. But I don't like coriander. Then order it without. I'll give you coriander in a minute, comes the shout. Right, that's it. We've had enough. You can have a biryani. Or fuck off into the kitchen and go make yourself a sauna. Right, who's up for a starter? Shall we get a pickle tray? I tell you, if I don't eat soon, I'm going to waste away. That means we need some poppadoms. How many want a nan? I can't believe it's now two hours since this shit began. <laughs> Everybody's struggling and the tension's getting stronger. We're starving and we don't think we can take it for much longer. I could eat a scabby horse! A housemate shouts up from the back, grabbing the Xbox controller, standing ready to attack. It's getting proper serious. It's like a hostage situation. All eyes fix on the pretentious twat now in a state of isolation. If you were more decisive and much less of a prick, we wouldn't all be standing around feeling like we might be sick. Just dial the fucking number, ask how much it's going to cost, but remember, give directions, yeah? Because last time they got lost. Thank you. I've been Matthew Nicholson. Thanks for listening.